Exercise 7. The stockholders' equity of Tyron Company at the beginning of the day on February 5th follows. Common stock, $20 par value, 150,000 shares authorized, of which 78,000 shares are issued in outstanding. 78,000 shares multiplied by the $20 par value explains the balance in common stock, $1,560,000. Paid in capital in excess of par value common stock, 525000 and the retained earnings balance is 675000 Total equity, 2760000 On February 5th, the directors declare a 16% stock dividend, distributable on February 28th to the February 15th stockholders of record. The stock's market value is $46 per share on February 5th, before the stock dividend. The stock's market value is $40 per share on February 28th and we're asked to prepare journal entries to record both the dividend declaration and its distribution. A small stock dividend increases the number of shares by 25% or less. So this is a small stock dividend. It will increase the number of shares outstanding by 16%. Small stock dividends are valued at market. Debit retained earnings for the market value of 12,480 shares. 78,000 shares previously issued in outstanding multiplied by 16% equals 12,480 new shares to be issued. When we multiply 12,480 new shares by the market value on the date of declaration, $46 per share, the value of this stock dividend is $574,080. We're not issuing the shares on February 5th so we can't put the par value into the common stock account yet. So we have a temporary par account. Common stock dividends distributable is a temporary par account. It holds the par value of these 12,480 shares between the date of declaration and the date of issuance. The par value of 12,480 shares at $20 par per share is $249,600 and the difference goes into paid in capital in excess of par value on common stock, $324,480. There is no journal entry on February 15th, the date of record. On February 28th, the shares are actually issued. They're distributed to the shareholders, at which point we take the par value out of the temporary par account, debiting common stock dividends distributable for the par value of 12,480 shares $249,600 and credit the permanent par account, common stock $20 par value. Requirement 2. One stockholder owned 950 shares on February 5th before the dividend. Compute the book value per share and the total book value of this stockholder's shares immediately before and after the stock dividend of February 5th. Since there is no preferred stock, the book value per share is total stockholder's equity divided by the number of common shares. Before the stock dividend, this $2,760,000 company was being claimed by 78,000 shares of stock. The book value is $35.38 per share. After the stock dividend, this same $2,760,000 company is now being claimed by 90,480 shares, 78,000 shares, plus the 12,480 shares distributed in the form of a stock dividend. 2,760,000 divided by 90,480 shares drops the book value per share to $30.50. But our stockholder hasn't lost anything. Because previously our stockholder owned 950 shares, which means those 950 shares were claiming a total book value of $33,611. After the stock dividend, this same shareholder now owns 1,102 shares, 116% 1 of 950 shares. When we multiply the lower book value by the increased number of shares, the book value has stayed the same because each stockholder has maintained his or her percentage ownership. This stockholder owns the same percentage of the company after the stock dividend, as does every other stockholder. So was there any benefit to this stock dividend from the stockholder's perspective? 
To answer that question, we need to look at the total market value. The market value on February 5th for this shareholder, 950 shares, multiplied by the then current market value, $46 per share, $43,700. After the stock dividend, this shareholder owns 1,102 shares, and although the market value per share on February 28th is lower, $40 per share, the total market value, $44,080, has increased. Now we expected the market value to drop because of the increased number of shares. In economics, you'll draw those supply and demand charts. In this case, the supply has increased, so we expect the market value to drop. So any increased value from the stockholder's perspective as a result of a stock dividend is not because of the change in the book value. The book value will not change as the result of any stock dividend or stock split. If there's any profit to be made, it will be from the stock market itself.